Hi, welcome to part two. So let's dive right back into the lion's gate and the sheep gate. It's not just uh, important in scripture, but it also has a recent uh, commemoration because it's a location where an IDF paratrooper entered in to capture the city in 1967. And the gate is not just known as the lion's gate, or the Sheep Gate, but also as the St. Stephen's Gate, because this is where he was martyred, uh, stoned to death 2,000 years ago. So, at the Sheep Gate is where the sheep were brought in to be washed at the Bethesda Pool, to be then sold and sacrificed over uh, 3,200 years ago. Spiritually speaking, it is the place where the Lamb, Jesus as a Lamb, and the Lion lie down together, are integrated into one. And the Sheep Gate also directly resonates with us, the Lord's disciples, as He describes us as sheep. In John 10, Jesus states to Israel that He is the Gate and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who leads His sheep in and out of the sheep pen, celestially reflected in Cancer, the cattle fold. After the Good Shepherd has sought out the lost sheep and has gathered them first into the sheep pen or cattle fold, he will then lead them onto their eternal pasture. He calls them home through the sheep gate to the heavenly throne room. So the sheep gate as an entryway to the city of Jerusalem is a reflection of the sheep gate, Jesus, and the entryway to the heavenly Jerusalem. Christ himself also came in through that gate, except uh, the time when he entered Jerusalem in his triumphal entry. He was arrested and led out of the Sheep Gate when he was crucified. So the Sheep Gate is also a place of not just entry uh, and subsequent cleansing, but also a place of judgment. And it tells us of how the Lord bore our judgment, the judgment of our sin. It is at this gate that we begin our walk with God towards the heavenly Zion. So it is at this gate, the gate reflecting salvation, coming to Christ, is where we start our walk with the Lord. He is not prepared, the Lord is not prepared to meet us anywhere else but at the cross, at this gate uh, connected to salvation. So the sheep gate is reflective of the open door set before us to enter both into salvation and at the end of our race as Christians to enter into the heavenly Zion to receive the blessings and clothing of salvation, whereas before we were spiritually naked. And ultimately, we will receive our clothing of light and His glory. Our flesh shoots will be uh, done away with, and we will get our new wineskins and transformed bodies. So in Psalm 24, we read, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. So open doors also relate to answered prayer, as we are instructed to knock and the door will be opened unto us. But it also points to the authority and opportunity in Jesus' name. Since Jesus, the King, has inherited the key of David, all the authority of King David, and more. Jesus guaranteed this door would be kept open. Note that it was not because of the disciples' strength that the door was opened, but because of the faithfulness, their faithfulness to Christ. The king, not the people, opened the door. And interestingly, of all the gates in Nehemiah's time, the sheep gate was the only one unlocked and consecrated. So an open door enabled John to see the visions and be called up to the throne room, Revelation 4.1, entering the gates of heaven in the Spirit. These can be entered only by those who have clean robes. We find that in Revelation 22 and those that have kept his word. Those who do not belong to God will not be allowed to enter, as we read in Revelation 21. So, if you'd like to learn a little bit more how the uh, walls were finished in, Gemi in Nehemiah's days, 
you can click on this video in the article and uh, it gives you like a brief explanation of what transpired and why he started with the Sheep Gate. So we know from scripture and history that Nehemiah started reconstructing the uh, walls of Jerusalem on the 4th of Av and that the work was finished in 52 days. So it was finished on Elul 25. And in the Bible, Nehemiah is represented as a type of the Holy Spirit, as his name means comforter or consoler. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to bear, to bear the burden of the soul and to assist and restore it. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that this great work will be completed. Be confident in this one thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will keep on performing it until the day of Christ. The Holy Spirit has come to draw us onto salvation and afterwards to repair, rebuild, and restore. The biblical basis for making this analogy can be found in Romans 15.4 and 1 Corinthians 10.11, but also in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Jesus said he would send us a comforter after his departure. So Nehemiah is an Old Testament picture of a New Testament truth. Our spirit, reborn through Jesus Christ, is the center of our being, like the temple in the center of the city of Jerusalem. Through the, uh, though the temple was rebuilt, the walls of the city were still in shambles. So prior to Nehemiah coming to Jerusalem, Ezra had already restored the temple. But the walls were still in a very bad state. In the same way that Nehemiah helped to rebuild the walls of the city, starting with the Sheep Gate, the Holy Spirit comes to rebuild the human soul to stability, order, and dignity. The Sheep Gate was the only gate without locks in the entire wall, which reminds us that the Lord has set before us an open door, as I mentioned. And he himself is both the door and the doorway. The chet, we, we, we established that in the article before. So at Nehemiah's time, Israel had been captured by Babylon, and Jerusalem was destroyed and most of the people were deported. But God promised that Jerusalem and Israel would be restored. The books of Nehemiah and Ezra record how these restorations took place. Upon studying the chapter further, we find that this is more than just an historical account. The destroyed walls and gates of Jerusalem also represent the damaged, damage worked within our human personality by the workings of the enemy and sins in our past. Nehemiah came to rebuild the walls because he had a deep love and concern for the people who were living in shame and insecurity. He had God's promise in the prophecy of Jeremiah that the Lord would restore Jerusalem. Nehemiah is seen as a type of the Holy Spirit, coming to establish God's will and purpose in our lives. He was assisted by Eliashib, the grandson of Joshua, the high priest contemporary with Zerubbabel. So together with Eliashib, the high priest, um, he rebuilt the Sheep Gate Tower, the Tower of the Hundred, and onto the Tower of Hanael. Next to the priest, the men of Jericho and Zakur, the son of Imri, continued building also. So after the receiving of God's favor, that is, uh, pointing, uh, that is pointed to by the Tower of Hananiel, we must, see, we must see, mu seek multiplication. That's the meaning of the Tower of the Hundred, which also points to the complete count of 100 sheep. So also the lost sheep that Jesus went to great length to find is reintegrated and the completion of the hundred is established. The men of Jericho and Zakur, the son of Imri, represent the process of being discipled. Um, the sheep gate was the only gate that was, that was consecrated, set apart as holy as it was used for a holy purpose of bringing in the sacrifices for the temple. 
and we know from scripture that we are lead we are called to lead our lives as living sacrifices laying our lives down to the Lord daily so the Hebrew term mikdak Nehemiah 331 refers to inspection so the sheep gate is not just the first but also the final gate in the wall a final inspection by the shepherd himself awaits us before we're offered up, before we're called up. And today the lion's gate stands where the inspection gate was once located. For believers, it could represent the judgment seat of Christ, a time when we will be called up to give an account of our lives, and we will be bestowed rewards according uh, according to our faithfulness and obedience to the Lord. So what takes place in the book of Nehemiah is like what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives when we who have been reborn are willing to not only have a new life in the Lord in terms of redemption and forgiveness of sins, but also to have it transmitted into our whole being, our thoughts, our emotions and character. So the process follows the reconstruction of all the gates of Jerusalem, which reflects the signs, the twelve signs, the constellations of the Maserath as well. So the book of Nehemiah unfolds a picture of the nature and work of the Holy Spirit, assisting us believers in rebuilding our lives' broken places. And though we as believers in Jesus Christ are spiritually reborn, there is still often damage upon our soul, our minds, our will and emotions from the past that is carried over. And without the Holy Spirit rest- restoration of our inner workings, we remain vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. So let's look at the time application of the 52 days, because it has prophetic significance with regard to our expectation and the end of a grace period. So in 52 days, the end is found of the Holy Spirit circuit and the end of the Jerusalem walls. The special wall of the city of David was completed in 52 days. The writer finishes the entire account by filling up the small interval between the northeast angle of the fortification and the sheep gate from which he started, confirming the lion's or sheep gate is both the start and the finish of the Holy Spirit's work in us. They sanctified the gate, uh, closing the process after the priests commenced to work with a formal ceremony of consecration. So when the work was completed, there was a solemn dedication of the entire circuit. The 52 days has great symbolic significance because it points directly to the wall of God surrounding the true Jerusalem, the one that surrounds the hidden Jerusalem in heaven. That wall, scripture says, is a wall of fire. And now we are tying it in with Pentecost, recalling the tongues of fire and also the refiner's fire of the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. So it ties in with grace and it is imparted into each of us the moment we receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. So it serves as a wall around us. So the number 52 also points us to the length of one solar year. We have 52 weeks in a year, so it's a point of beginning and ending. It's also connected to the world, to the word Elohim, in Gematria, so we see how the Sheep Gate was a place of beginning and ending, and the book of Nehemiah starts and finishes with that gate. So in the next video, we can briefly uh, see how the 12 gates of Nehemiah are actually reflecting our Christian walk from beginning to end, from salvation to eternal blessing. And I hope to see you in the third video.